What's up dudes, back out in the garage today. Today we're not working on either of these cars. We're actually gonna be working on the Forester. Got a little bit of maintenance to do, nothing too exciting. But I'm gonna show you basically an easy way, a uh, simple way to rotate your own tires. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and take a look. So quickly before we get started, why do you care about rotating your tires? Well, the, uh, the short of it is that you would preferably like your tires to wear at the same rate. So that way your tires all wear out at the same time, you buy a whole new set of tires at the same time, etc. Tires will vary uh, in wear uh, for a lot of reasons. Which wheels are the ones actually driving the car, rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, all wheel drive, etc. Uh, your front tires are, are taking typically more abuse when cornering, they're the ones having to do the work for prevent <clears throat> from understeering, etc. Um, Overall, you, the, the gist is you want your tires to wear at the same rate. All-wheel drive cars care because the, the overall circumference has to stay pretty similar between all the tires, which is why they recommend if you, if you wear one out, you should get it, you know, or you get a hole in one, you should get it shaved to match the others, etc. But basically, the gist is tires wearing at the same rate is what you want. Rotation will keep them all wearing at similar rates. <clears throat> if the front are wearing a little bit quicker than the back and you rotate them, then the backs are now on the front and they're wearing at the same rate that the front ones were, if you see what I'm saying. Uh, so yeah, wearing at the same rate is what you want. So that's why you should rotate your tires. So today we're actually gonna do a really easy method that I always like to use. Uh, what we're gonna actually use, or I'm gonna use, I have other tools, but for today I'm just gonna use the tools that are actually in the trunk of the car. With one exception, uh, which I'll show you in a minute, that I recommend having, um, but everything else we're going to use what's in the trunk just to show you. You guys can do this too very easily uh, if you got a flat piece of ground um, and a trunk that hasn't been ransacked and all your tools are missing. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to it. Alrighty, in your trunk, once you get all the crap out of here, you're going to pull this up. You'll notice there's a lot of foam down here. This is actually extra storage if you have stuff you want to keep in here. But if you remove this piece of foam, Ugh. Hold on, I need two hands. Foam removed. All right, underneath the foam, you're gonna find spare tire. There's a jack here. There's a couple extra little things like a screwdriver, a tow hook, and then there's actually a uh, lug wrench down in here. We're gonna use basically everything but the tow hook and the screwdriver. So this just lifts right out. Set that aside, we're gonna need it in a minute. And believe it or not, we're actually going to use this spare tire. Now is a good time too to check when you pull this out. Just a little twist tie here in the center. This thing will eventually let go. All right, let go. This pulls out. Oh, you'll also need this guy. This is, this is for the jack. I'll show you that in a sec. So once you take the twist tie off, this tire just pulls out. So that's what's in your trunk. That's what we're going to use. All right, so before we actually rotate the tires, we got to know which way to do the rotation, right? Which tire goes where? So this, this matters. Um, fairly significantly, you need to know a few things. You need to know um, what type of car you have. Is it front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, etc. You also need to know what kind of tires you have. Are they directional? Uh, meaning the tread can only go one direction. Are they asymmetrical and they just, it doesn't matter. They can go either way and they're happy. You also need to know the size differences. Some cars come with a staggered setup. Uh, muscle cars and some European cars like M3s, etc. Sometimes come with a, uh, a wider wheel and tire package on the back. So clearly if you have a wider wheel and tire package on the back than you do on the front, they can't be swapped to the front. Um, if you have directional tires, they can't be swapped from left to right. Um, if you have directional tires and staggered tires, you can't do a wheel <laughs> tire rotation at all unless you get the tires unmounted and swapped to the different wheels. So I recommend um, going to TireRack's website. They have a good uh, instructional on like 
different patterns to use depending on what your what type of vehicle you have. Um, so yeah, let's take a look real quick. All right, this is from Tyrax website. If you look real quick, um, they're going to show you the whole article on like how to do it. But if you're doing a four tire four wheel rotation, then uh, depending on what you have, front wheel drive option, rear and four wheel drive options. I like this uh, number A. I don't know why I've always used this one. Basically, the two wheels on the back go directly to the front. The front ones crisscross and go to the back. This car has non -di non directional tires and uh, they can go basically on any corner. They're all the same size, they can go in any corner. So this will work out great. Uh, back ones go straight to the front, front ones go straight, kind of crisscross to the back. All right, here's our tools for the day. Clearly the trunk jack, so we're gonna use to jack up each corner of the car. Uh, this thing is used to spin the end of the trunk jack, which actually is what raises it up and down. Lug wrench, this is the spare tire clearly. Only thing in addition that did not come in the trunk is this is a torque wrench. This uh, is uh, highly recommended if you're going to be working on your car at all. Torque wrenches let you basically set a specific tightness and tighten it down so the uh, you're only putting X, X amount of torque on the, the bolt or nuts or whatever you're reinstalling. Typically every, every bolt and nut on the car will have a specific torque setting recommended by the manufacturer. You should follow it, especially on things like lug nuts, because uh, you don't want your tire, you don't want your wheel, come, wheel coming off while you're going down the road, and you also don't want to get on the side of the road with a flat tire and not be able to get these off because they've been muscled on, and this is all you have. This is not very much leverage, <laughs> so keep that in mind. All right, step one is going to be get our jack in place. You'll notice a couple little notches down here on the front. The uh, pinch welds, that's where our jack is going to line up. Um, basically this little groove is going to go right into the pinch weld. We're going to start off by just spinning this by hand. You see when I spin it, it grows. Make sure it's nice and flush as it grows. Alright, so you can spin it just by hand initially. Then it's going to get tight. Then we got to switch to the other tool. But before we do this, we want to loosen the lugs because eventually this one has a parking brake, so it'll be fine. But it's it's more beneficial to pull the lugs off before you lift the car. Okay, so we got the wheel just barely off the ground here. Don't ever trust your life to this jack. These jacks are not great. We're not gonna be under the car at all. I'm trying to show you that you can do this with just what's in the back of your trunk. But if you're ever gonna be under your car, do not trust your life to this. Please get a jack stand or something else to put next to it to keep it up. Now, we gotta pull the lugs off. Right, cool Chuck the wheels off all right well now we need the other wheel to go on there right but I don't have another jack to use on the other side and I don't want to be able to balance on these like nasty little jacks on both sides right what's gonna make it easy we're gonna take our spare and we're gonna put it on that wheel until we're done so this spare tire <laughs> is going to become a temporary tire on this wheel. Then we'll have our second wheel to put there. That wheel will go to the other side. That wheel will go to the front when we're done. That front wheel will come back here. We'll take this one off, put it back in the trunk. Real quick, good example of the wear difference. So 
This is the tread depth gauge. You can kind of see the uh, 7 30 seconds is just sticking out, so we're a little bit below 7 30 seconds. If you try it in a few different spots, you get pretty much the same reading. This is the tire that came off the front. This is the one that came off the back. If we do the same reading, you can see that the seven is not quite visible. Eight is visible. So these tires already showing a little bit difference in wear. See, same thing, seven is not quite visible. Eight's visible. So, just in the 10,000 miles or 12,000 miles, whatever this car has it on driving, the fronts are already showing um, not quite a full 30 seconds difference, but it's different enough that it's for sure time to swap these. So let's go ahead and put that rear tire on the front and then we'll take that front and put it on the opposite rear. If you're curious how a torque wrench works, basically you can set the exact amount of foot pounds of torque you'd like um, and this thing will click when it gets to that level of torque. So for a Forester XT or a 2017 Forester in general, it is 89 foot pounds. All right, last wheel, last wheel, pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna remove the spare, just like you did with all the other ones, and then put on your, your last wheel. All right, that's it. It's pretty easy. You could do it. Um, same basic process I like to use on any of the cars, really. Uh, I don't like having two wheels in the air uh, when I'm just using little jacks and jack stands. Pros and cons, clear to everything. If you want to pay somebody $100 to do it, maybe it's not worth the effort for you. I like to do it because I know it's done right. I know it's done properly. All the lug nuts are torqued exactly how I want them torqued so I'm not stuck on the side of the road trying to like beefcake that thing off um, if I get a flat tire or whatever. Uh, another pro uh, is that you get familiar using the trunk jack and uh, the trunk tools so you're, you're familiar in case you do get a flat tire you have to take the wheel off and put the other one put the spare on you're good. Cons uh, clearly that trunk jack is not amazing uh, it does the job, but it's not made to be used over and over and over and over again. So uh, if you want to get a like legit floor jack and you're going to be working on your car, definitely worth it. Even some of the Harbor Freight ones are uh, reasonable quality. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, take some time. You can do it in under an hour. Uh, you have like general handiness. Uh, it's really not that hard. Take the lug nuts off, take the wheel off, put the wheel on, lug nuts back on, etc. Um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask me in the comments. Um, if you're not comfortable doing any of this, please don't do it. Uh, <laughs> I'd prefer you not lose your wheels and tires going down the road. Just pay somebody the $100 if you need to. Otherwise, hope it helped out. Hope you, le hope you learned something. Um, at least you get generally know what the process is when somebody says, hey, you need your tires rotated. At least you'll know what that means. Uh, so yeah, like I said before, questions, comments, please, please ask me in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Got some more. I'm waiting on a cool mod for the SDI. And the company, I'm kind of like working with them. And they're supposed to be sending it to me. It's been a couple weeks uh, overdue at this point. Hopefully they're going to, you know, get it out today or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I got something cool coming. I promise. I know I keep, I know I keep hyping it, but I'm just as excited as you are. But it's not here yet. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.